Well, all right, guys, welcome back to episode two of A Girl's Gonna Talk. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, so today I have on my best friend and like my literal soul sister, Molly Mitchell. She knows me better than I know myself, um, like, and will literally yell at me sometimes in the most loving and caring way. Um, she just knows when I'm, you know, being messing stupid. Up. Yes, that, that. She'll literally, I'll text her after a night out. I'll be like, Molly, and then she'll be like, Devin. And I'll be like, I know, I know. So, you know, it's, I needed to have my girl on today. Um, you know, it's Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. To all who Day celebrate. To all who celebrate. Even though it's about, um, even though it's a ridiculously capitalistic yeah. holiday. Yeah, you know is. what? <laughs> Love is a real thing. And Love it should be celebrated every single day. It, but you it, know really, <laughs> it really should be. But no, <laughs> like, you know, like Valentine's Day is, I think, about a lot of capitalism. And like, you know, so much. let's just make money off of buying a $30 bouquet of roses. Bro, I saw some horrible things that was like the amount of chocolate that is wasted oh. during Valentine's Day and the populations of people that it affects is just like so oh. absolutely ridiculous. Like I can only imagine. But, you know, we wanted to film this episode or I wanted to film this episode <laughs> today because I love love. I'm obsessed with love. I'm obsessed with all things love. Um, Rom-com girl. I'm a lover girl at heart. Like Libra that Venus is, type B. It's, yeah, it's the Libra Venus. I mentioned it in last week's episode. <laughs> oh, did but, you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, of course. I was like, we, we went through our big six. So I was like, <gasps> Libra Venus. Like, that's me, you know? <laughs> but so we wanted, I wanted to do this episode on Valentine's Day just because I thought the energy of today would be really good to talk about love and all aspects of that and there's no better person to talk about it with my best friend who has been there for literally everything and has given me, I think, so many tarot readings on love. I think um, I've given you more tarot readings than I've given anyone ever. I think so, too. Including myself. I really do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really think that's actually very accurate. Um, but no, me and Molly are literally best friends. We've been best friends for like over four years now. So yeah. it's we met the first Week, week of college the first week of college mm -hmm. i actually saw a tiktok the other day that was like it's you and that girl you met the first week yep. of college i for said life. that and I was to like, you bro oh you did yes that was oh, me I, thought, <laughs> I have no memory i have see she's my best friend i know mm -hmm. she came from that period of time but to be fair i have no recollection of that period of time yep 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 um, but <laughs> yeah we were we've been best friends ever since so i thought who better to have on the podcast today we had a i nice met you because i gave you a tarot reading yeah Sorry. That I, was, I just remember that, that. was the that was the reading. I knocked on her door and I was like, I heard you give tarot readings. And then she gave me a really accurate tarot A really reading. good one. <laughs> so, um, that was before I was good too. No, that was. It was really good. It, but it, it lasted. Molly's never been wrong about anything. Um, so even though her boyfriend might tell her she's wrong, sometimes she's not. Um, so what? He, yeah, you're always right. I am all knowing. He doesn't yes. enjoy that, which is really, really <laughs> fair, honestly. Like, I completely understand. Yeah. But no. I, I, did I tell you when I was down at the Cape, I found. <laughs> a baby book from my parents that my parents had filled in when yeah. I was a kid and one of the things was that was like Molly's personality at like one years old and it was like she she is all knowing she has done this before yes, yes. <laughs> and I was like see Logan like <laughs> she has done this before like second that like she's so right <laughs> so who better to have on the podcast today than Molly? It's going to be a good episode. I'm feeling very good today. I'm in a very good mood. We just came from lunch. We had a full bottle of wine, guys. So <laughs> I, we are 21 because I know I'm going to be posting this on TikTok. So please do not take this down, TikTok. We're but legal. We're legal. We're very legal. And they also <laughs> gave us free limoncello shots at the end. So I think it was really good. It was delicious. She was like, do I sip this? And I just went uh, and I sipped it. it. <laughs> I sipped it because I wanted to try it. No. And then, and I then, just it. And then I shot it. Yeah. Taurus Mars has to examine all the tastes first <laughs> and do that stuff. But yeah, so it's going to be a good episode. We're feeling good. You know, it's five o'clock somewhere, not in Boston, but it's definitely They don't need to know that. No, nobody <laughs> needs to know that. But yeah, okay, so I guess we're going to start again with okay. song and quote of the week. So oh, shit, right. You, you go first for your... Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, you can swear. Go okay, ahead. Fantastic. I don't, I don't <laughs> okay, let's do, let's do song of the week first. All right, am I going first or are you? You go first. All right, my song of the week is Oxygen by Willie Mason. Shout out to one of my friends from high school, Ariel 
Benjamin. Oh, <laughs> I love Ariel. Okay. Um, yeah, she, oh yeah, you met her. I forgot yes. about that. Yeah, no, she, I remember exactly where I was when she showed me this song, and I believe we were sophomores in high school. We might have been freshmen, mm-hmm. but we were, she was spending the night at my house, and we were up like mad late, and at this time, I was not allowed to stay up very late, so I was very excited, <laughs> um, and we stayed up late, and I remember she showed me this song, and we were like, platonically cuddling as you know friends do when you're in high school yeah absolutely um and we were cuddling and i was just like man this is like and neither of us had like partners or anything either Mm -hmm. so it was just very lovely and like a good you know good we're sharing music with each other and i love this song because i feel like it's such a good uh, just like thing to listen to especially like when you're feeling like sad about the state of the world yeah. and like especially if you're somebody who's like empathetic towards causes of yep. other people and what other people are going through like I feel like it covers a lot of ground and it like speaks to it's like you know I'm a very spiritual person and I believe I in too. the power of prayer uh you know not in the catholic sense so, of yeah, it no, uh, but no catholic sense no catholic, bye bye sense, catholic of it. sense but in the sense of like you know your thoughts have power your words yeah, have power exactly. and like this song, I feel like, especially if you sing it, like, it's such a powerful prayer of just, oh, yeah. like, goodwill and love to all who are out there in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But anyway, Oxygen by Willie Mason. What's yours? Okay, mine is Awaken by Big Wild. Ooh. I was front row for the 1975 at Lollapalooza last year, and they <sighs> were at the same stage, so I got to see them, and they were great, but the song is just very magical, and it's very, like, fresh and starting, and, like, I feel like it's like a kind of like, a, you know, I have a playlist called like hopes for new beginnings or like songs oh. you listen to for new beginnings. And I feel like with, you know, love in the air today and all that stuff, like I feel like this song is very speaking to the area that I'm in in my life right now. And I kind of listened to it and I was just like, oh, yeah. Like I listened to it again this weekend for the first time. And I was like, yeah, this is this is definitely the song. So Awakened by Big Wild. It's so good. It's so like magical it was a tiktok audio for a really long time it was very oh. popular on tiktok so okay I i'll probably then. oh yeah you definitely have. you'll have to send it to me so oh yeah listen to it. so i'll put that in the thing but okay let's move on to quotes because i know we both like were, we, we were both li- were struggling <laughs> really hard we to were pick. sitting at lunch and we were like what are we gonna do it <laughs> we're just both like we're both quote people and i'm just such a love person that i'm like i have twenty thousand quotes there online, was a period of time so. that we sent each other quotes every morning i remember, remember that was so oh sweet. God. Wait, we should start. Okay, doing we're that gonna again. start doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would literally. I think it was sophomore year. We would send each other quotes every morning. And be like, yeah, quote I of think the day, so. music song of the day. See, that's why I'm doing this, guys. I knew it was for a reason. Okay, <laughs> okay. What's your quote? What's your quote? What did you end up picking? I have three. Okay, okay, go. Because okay. you know it's gonna take them. <laughs> I have three. Um, and they're all very short. They're not very long. Um, mm-hmm. I know you have like I think one good long one. Yeah. So my first one is like one that I technically saw on Tumblr, but I guess the original quote of it comes from somebody on Twitter X. Excuse me. Um, no, yeah, it's Twitter. Uh, Sorry. I'm and the X handle Twitter. I found was Luis Miller, but I don't, you know, I don't actually know who this is credited to. Um, but it is no love, however brief, is wasted, and I feel like that. That's very good to me makes a lot of sense for my romantic experiences and also my platonic love and familial love experiences. Mm -hmm. My second one is from um, a poet and author who I think just just recently, like as in the last few months, released this great book called Black Liturgies um, that focuses on a lot of like black poets. And anyway, her name is Cole Arthur Riley and it is, those who believe love is a scarcity are less likely to give it away freely. That's another big one. Yep. I like that one. That one's very In good. the sense that every motherfucker I know <laughs> who, who has struggled to show their emotions and love is mm-hmm. because they are scared of are scared of it, of what it means yeah. in some sense, you yeah. know? And then the last one I have, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I like is, this. Um, it's a Latin phrase. I have no fucking clue who it's credited to i found it on pinterest yes. um in a list of latin phrases and this one was attributed to specific zodiac signs and this one was for libras in which yes. you are a libra venus which is why i found it fitting we anyway the quote is in latin gonna mispronounce this go ahead civis amari ama 
if you wish to be loved, love. Which I think speaks greatly to the last quote that I just had. Yes. In the sense that, and also what I was talking about earlier, about thoughts are powerful. Yep, thoughts become things. What you, we know that. What you put out into the world, you attract. Yep. And so therefore, if yep. you wish to be loved, you better be out there fucking loving people. <laughs> like, exactly. If you just be sitting Embody out here being Embody that love. Mean, yeah. Like, no one's going to come for you. No, <laughs> like, exactly. I love all of those. I'm going to I'm gonna do, I think I'm just going to do. Which one did you decide on? Should I do three, two, because you did three? Or? I don't know, man. You can if you want. Three okay. is officially my lucky I number. I should have, <laughs> like, okay, I definitely should have thought about this more. Because, like, now I'm thinking about lyrics from songs that are also, like, quotes Hell no. Love. Go with what okay, three okay. you already okay, have. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm going to do, okay, so the first. This one is about self-love, and I like this Very one. Very important. Um, it's, I kept going, not because I wanted to. Trust me, all of me wanted to stop. I kept going because I deserve to know what not giving up on myself felt like. And I love that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right right just in the heart. Rip me to shreds. Right in the heart. <laughs> but I just think that that one's very good. Like, I'm just very much have been in my era of self-love for a very long time now. And, you know, like, I think, you know. I'm so proud of you for it. I know. It's become like, so a long deeply way. proud. Molly's, Molly's <laughs> watched for you so much. So, like, this is, this is very big, guys. But, um, no, and I think that, you know, like, consistency is one of the forms of self-love. And so, I think, you know even though like it's hard and you want to give up, you feel those emotions and you're like, shit, this hurts. And then you move on and you're like, and then the next thing comes. And so that's why I, then I have the next quote is we accept the love we think we deserve from uh, the perks of being a wallflower. And I think that's also very true to like putting out what you attract. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. People that if you wish to be loved, love. Very yeah. Same like vibe. very same vibe. Like, whatever you put out you're gonna get back if you're a very confident person that loves yourself you're gonna get somebody that loves you for you and just like how you are and who you are but if you're vibrating at a lower frequency then you're not gonna get that you know you're gonna attract something that's just gonna stress you out yeah no so, I mean if you're in such a like scarcity mindset if yes, you're in this mindset exactly. of like the I, scarcity quote like this doesn't exist and I can never have this because I've yeah. never had good examples of it like and therefore it is not like yeah then you're just you're gonna, not you're never gonna see it <laughs> no you're never gonna see and it. and if it ever does present itself to you you're gonna self-sabotage exactly and then my last quote that I have is from the notebook because I'm a huge <laughs> rom-com girl, and I found this one. I had one that was a bit longer, and I was like, that's too long. So I'm going to do this one. Oh, I like the longer one, though. I know. The longer one is good, but... But what's know, the one you we'll picked? Do this, we'll do this. We'll do this one. Um, the best love is the kind that awakens the soul, that makes us reach for more, that plants the fire in our heart and brings peace to our minds. That's what I hope to give you forever. And that's from The Notebook. And I, I love that because I do really think that there's, like, different types of love but one of the strongest forms of love is like when you love someone so much that you are like you know like I, I've been seeing this a lot lately and it's like quotes of like relationships are like either you can try and you can bring your baggage and you can be like okay let's work on it together or you can not try and just both have baggage and it turns into something like so you know like not worth it and I think that quote just very much speaks to the like, you know, the best kind of love is the kind that you want to work on, the kind that you feel like brightens your soul and, you know, like it's kind of like like you want to give that person your all, you know, and, and love is it's all sorts of things like it's hard and it's stressful and it's great and it's amazing. And it's like it's just all I just like. Oh, my Libra Venus is getting me to me today. Yeah, it, really, like, it really is. It's the Valentine's overtaking. Day. It's it's overtaking. It's like, oh my God, it's eating me up right now. But <laughs> no, I just, I love that quote. And I love The Notebook. It's one of my favorite movies. I haven't and seen it in a really, really long time. Me neither. Time. It makes me cry every time. I'm a big crier when it comes to rom-coms. But I, again, I think that's my Libra Venus. Not the no water in my chart. Because I don't have any Definitely water Definitely not the chart. no water in your chart. That's for sure. <laughs> no, but okay. So saying as we're getting a little uh. bit deeper here I guess with that quote we'll start with you know the questions and getting ah, to talk about questions. about yeah about deep stuff <laughs> she's like I don't know where to look now she's just still not looking all looking at the camera this is hilarious okay <laughs> um but yeah I mean the questions of like you know what brought like why we're here so I guess 
I guess we'll start off. What's your current relationship status, Molly? What are, uh, what are you doing? Yes. Well, I am in a very loving relationship with my partner of almost two years. I know. Next I week on Friday is our two-year anniversary. Um, I watched this happen, guys, and she, it's just so cool to see them together. She ensured I didn't like. <laughs> I was go insane I while was I was like, waiting. For this I was happen. like, "You're not crazy. Like this is um, gonna happen," and it did. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So I got to watch you and Logan. Like Logan's her. Logan her getting partner. a mad shout out on this podcast. Yeah, he's getting big shout out. Um, not even here right now. Not but, here. But, but I got to. I got I to force <laughs> him to listen to it while Molly's drawing because you know ADHD. We need to be don't, distracted. Don't mind me. I did take my meds today. It doesn't matter. <laughs> But yeah, um, I got to watch you and Logan like kind of bloom into something. And I think that was so, so beautiful. And like, I, I just remember that whole thing happening. And for you guys to be coming up on two years is like insane. It's crazy. It's like, crazy. what do you mean about that? Technically, no. and we've been dating for two years, but we've yeah. known each other. I've known him for the same amount of time that I've known you. That's crazy. It's literally crazy to think yeah. about, too. We but. were not. We were friends. We it took a while. It, was, it took a while. It, it was not It one was like of those the invisible string theory. Like, it was always there, but you never knew about it until it needed to come to fruition. I dated of. two different men Oof. in the time. Yeah. Like, I, I met him. I was dating somebody. Mm -hmm. And then I broke up with that guy. And I dated somebody else. And then after we broke up, like, a bit after we broke up, yeah. then we got together. Yeah. I think that, you know. Specify so. that for some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was, it was like they were like very much like they were in the same friend group and they knew of each other. But then I think at one point they kind of just got closer and then they were kind of. Yeah. And after I broke up with yeah, my incredibly she, emotionally uh, abusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah after she was just in a really bad relationship. And, you know, the best things come from that. You know, sometimes. I almost picked a quote today that was very much <laughs> speaking to that fact. Very much, very much. We're gonna get deep in this episode, guys. You know, so if there is anything that's, you know, this day, this I hope day you know, this day for us, both of us, holds some really fun weight trauma. to it. Great. All right, we you could just this. say drama. Yeah, <laughs> I guess drama. I've never been a fan of Valentine's Day, but today I feel yeah. awfully happy, seeing as I got a very nice text this morning. Oh. So, oh, yeah, all right, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> feels good to have a different Valentine's Day than. Being waking up feeling depressed and hating the world, you know. Yay for love! Uh, yay for love! All right, what's the next happiness. question? Okay, so I guess I mean you're kind of in a relationship, but I guess like what kind what are of. you? Well, you are, you are, but like what are you? <laughs> I meant like what are you? What are you looking for? Like from like or what have you looked for from relationships from the past? The wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> Second that that has been <laughs> no, but like. Okay, what have I, I mean, that's changed each time that I've gotten out of a relationship because yeah. it's like, I feel like the most beautiful aspect of a relationship, mm -hmm. even though I've been in a lot of bad ones, um, the beauty in all of those was discovering what it is you actually want from a relationship. Yeah. And I it's like, you know, a lot of people have this kind of idea of like, oh, like, I know what my type is and I know exactly what my man or woman or partner needs to be doing mm -hmm. um in order for me to like them they need to look like this they need to be exactly this many inches <laughs> or like you know they have people have so many like specifics but it's like I feel like the best way to actually know what you want is to be in a relationship with somebody else and kind of work together and figure out like oh what is it that I actually need from a romantic partner that is different from what I need from, yeah. you know, a best friend, which is different from what I need from, you know, my mother, um, yeah, which is, exactly. you know, at the same time, all going to kind of feed into each other because a romantic partner is kind of, I personally feel like that kind of cross in between the kind of familial love that you receive that's unconditional and that's mm -hmm. like, um, you know, tied together by the strings of the universe. Um, yeah. And, like, a best friend, platonic kind of love that is, you know, I choose you yeah. and I enjoy being around you and I like your energy and you offer me things and I offer you things and we have some sort of balance to give. So it's like, yeah. I've never really had a type. I think the only type that I've ever had in a relationship is somebody who was willing and able to make me laugh. I love that. That's that, a very good. That's, like, one of the have. only things, like, all of my partners I can say were people who made me laugh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, that was gonna lead into my next question of like, what oh. is your what is your ideal type? But I mean, I, I don't have one. <laughs> you don't have one. But I mean, I I don't know. I've always had like that. Like, I guess like what I've looked for is like, I mean, something I very much lacked, and I think like as a child, like I grew up with divorced parents. So for anybody who doesn't know, like, it, I I have a very different perspective on love. Like I. Very different for me. My yeah. parents were not divorced Your as well, per- yeah, so yeah. very different. They're still together. From. And I, I mean, I, I grew up thinking it kind of like wasn't real. Like thinking it kind of like wasn't there. Like I mean, so there horrible. was part of me that was like, oh my god, I want this and I want it to be there. And I, you know, my aunt and my uncle have been like my best, I like oh, like yeah, image from that. About them the yeah, other day. yeah. Like they've been together since they were like. 20 years old and like Damn. have like love each other and she's like he's my best friend and like that's kind of always what I think I've looked for and like like you know I want someone that's going to support me and be my best friend in the way of that but also like somebody that I can also be romantic with and banter with and have that kind of like fun like vibe and you know somebody that gets me for for me, because I'm a little weird sometimes, you know, I can be a little, I can be a little silly. She's so. a silly goose. I, I can adjust to that. <laughs> we wouldn't I be know. friends if she wasn't. No, we wouldn't. I'm we a Leo rising, meaning my Aquarius, my descendant is an Aquarius, meaning yeah. I look for unique people. So, yeah. you know. So, and I am. If you hang out with me, you're cool as fuck. <laughs> exactly. And if you hang out with me, then you're definitely unique and funny. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of like always what I've looked for. But like as to ideal type, I love creative people. I, oh, real. I think like, I mean, my <laughs> this is so funny. My whole family, my astrologer literally was like, um, like based on your birth chart, like you're, I, I feel like you would fit somewhat, somewhat better with somebody a little bit older than you. And I was like, oh girl trust as me. long as i have known this as tr- girl <laughs> as she has been like i like older, older men guys. yeah <laughs> i literally have been like i like older guys like as soon as i turned 18 i think i went on a tinder date with someone who was like 27 or 26. oh my god i know Denver. i know listen okay it's fine like, it happened it's in the past it's we're not gonna talk about it but no i like my whole family i think expects me to be like bring somebody like you know older than me home because it's just that's just the way I am I just I'm on a I think emotionally more mature level too no, yeah. than I, I all of my friends will test that everybody I meet thinks I'm like 25 much and older I'm like, than you actually yeah are. and I'm like no I'm 21 like yeah, I'm very have- I'm very I'm very much still a baby but in my head I'm just like I think I've had to see a lot and have to go through a lot in my childhood and especially when it comes to love I know what I want yeah so and you know what you, you shouldn't have yeah, what I shouldn't well. have as well because I think we'll we'll get into that in a little bit but I've been in uh we've both been in a lot of very odd situations that have been <laughs> pushing us to what we deserve not what we accepted at the time Ooh, but like yeah that. yeah so I don't know that's kind of my ideal type I don't really have like I mean like taller than me I'm like pretty tall I'm like five six five seven so you got to be a little bit taller than me and then I don't know I like light eyes. Light eyes are cool, but like dark eyes are okay. fine. Dark hair, love a beard, facial features, you know, somebody that works out a little bit. I love musicians. <laughs> like, like that's my thing. Like, I, I mean, I love, I said I like creative people, but. No, I definitely also like creative I, people. Yeah. For sure. Creative people, musicians. I'm like, yeah. we've always known, like I literally, when I was like 14 guys, I had the biggest crush on Chris Martin. And I still do. I, I was going to say, I, so, when you were 14. Yeah. Uh, and he's no, like, I heard about this two days ago. Yeah. And he's like 42, 44. I think he's like 45 now. And I'm like, but when I was, <laughs> when I was like 14, he was like early 40s. And I was like, I love this man. So <laughs> I hate you for so, that. Oh my god. So we've just we've Oh, known. let's not forget what? What is the lead singer of Bastille, Bastille Dan Sting. Smith? I've always had a little crush on him. I've always little. thought <laughs> <laughs> We can't talk Put about that. Put him on your vision board yeah. for 3 years. <laughs> listen, listen, little crush, <laughs> little crush, but you know, I just just always been musicians. I'm like if uh, you can sing to me or you can like If you can serenade me. If you can serenade me or you can play an instrument, then immediately like If you're going to yep. write a song about me, I, that's my, on my it's on my bucket list. I want somebody to write a song about me. Like I, I've written a song about you. What? You've never told me this? <laughs> I swear you've never told me you've written a song about me. I'll have to. Okay. I don't know if it's finished. Okay. But <laughs> I definitely started one. Yeah, well, it's on my bucket list. Like I want like I want two different songs wrote, written about me. Like I want <laughs> <laughs> minimum 
too. <laughs> like, I want somebody, like, I want it, like, I want one of the ones to be, like, mysterious and be like, oh, I have to figure out, like, was that about me? Like, was that not, like, you know, from, like, a past lover? And then I, like, oh want, like, God. one about, like, a current relationship, like, somebody being obsessed with me. Being, I'm like, sorry. That is so silly. silly. I know it is silly. I love you for but, it. But, like, like it's, it's so real, but at the same time. Listen, guys, you know, it's Libra Venus. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, I've always wanted, like, that That would be so cool, having a song written about you. Like, just think of that. Like, oh, my God. Uh, that makes me geek out. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, I guess let's go on to the next question. Like, so what do you want your future relationships to look like? Well, I mean, you're already in one. So, or, and or, like, do you want to get married? Like, what do you want your future look like like kids marriage like all of that stuff i mean it's valentine's day so let's get into it (laughs) um yeah i mean i i'm i'm gonna be so real right now i have never pictured a future for myself past the age of 18 yeah so i've been in that position too i for the last i am 21 yeah three years three years you i i have basically just been taking it as day it by comes. day yeah <laughs> like i don't do you want to get married i mean you I, you shared your I vision board to. with me from pinterest yeah so um we have our pinterest i would love already. to no i'd love to get married um i think that would be so much fun mostly mm-hmm. because i've been to a lot of weddings because my family's so huge and i yeah. love weddings and I'm, I'm, love so weddings I'm so excited because my one of my favorite cousins is getting married me in july too. wait really not in july but one oh. of my favorite cousins <laughs> is getting married so i'm like very excited to go to a no, wedding oh yeah one of my favorite cousins is getting married in july and i kid you not this man he doesn't know this but uh, hopefully he'll never see this um he is one of the two cousins who like kind of formed my entire personality. <laughs> like, cousins it's gonna that. be Logan's first ever wedding. Oh my! He's God. never been to a okay. wedding before. I, t- for context, I mean, I have been in at least We've, ten weddings. Jesus Christ! If yeah. not more, She's I've Irish been guy. to at She's least very twenty. Big family. I come from Irish Catholics. Big, yeah, I have Huge. eight aunts and uncles, big. not including my father. Yeah, on my dad's side, I <laughs> like. Do you know how many eat like my grandmother and her siblings had like up to like in between five to nine kids each? So it's like my family's massive. My Thanksgivings are like There's 120. There's no way I'm people. ever pushing that many kids out of me. I'm yeah, so no, sorry. me either. No, no, no max no, three. No, max no. three. I think three is a good number. The only uh-huh. reason I doubt that is actually because I work as a tour guide and I had a guest who was talking to me a few days ago, like probably a, a week and a half ago, <laughs> and was like. I was saying, she was talking about her kids, and she was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I have three kids. And I was like, oh, that's lovely. Like, I've always considered that, like, a great number of, like, kids to have. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's lovely, but somebody always gets left out. And I was like, oh, that's so sad. Like, that I never thought about sad. it that way. Um, so two or three, for sure. Okay. I would Do love you, to get married. Yeah. Where ideal location? Do you have one? Um, me and Logan have talked about getting married on his grandmother's farm I, in yes, upstate you've New told York me about this. This because is very it's cute. beautiful it's so cute. and it's so pretty I and it is so go. peaceful. And if we didn't get married there, I honestly don't give a shit where we got married. As long as my family was there and as long as my friends were there, like that's what matters most to me. I'm going to be sure. in your wedding yeah absolutely no you see here's the thing i have been thinking about this recently yeah. not because there's any chance of me getting married in the next like five years at all um but <laughs> like because i have i would have to like i don't i hate traditional weddings so i wouldn't yeah, want to have too. a traditional wedding like at no, all no no no, um, no traditional. i would probably make it some sort of like <laughs> like spiritual yep aspect Hippies. in which all of my like bridesmaids would be my maids of honor yeah in which like you how would you be one choose? obviously yeah, like, like how am i going to choose between you maya jordan sister. my sister like my no. cousin caitlin like you can't do it like i can't do it no. so yeah yeah i think that's great i mean you're going to be in my my wedding for sure i i don't know like i don't have a sister so you you will I mean, unless one of my cousins is like, you're going to be my maid of honor, then, you know. That's fair. You know, like, no, or I'm going to be your maid of honor. I, I would step down for a family member you always. Know, I like, mean, always, yeah. no hate. My cousins are definitely like, uh, but I, I <laughs> have, I have, like, I was telling, <laughs> I was telling the guys in my office about this, and all the guys in my office shit on me all the time, because they're like, 
you know, like Devin, like, come on, you can't have your wedding planned out when you're, you know, Ev- like, you know, do you know how many young girls old? plan their wedding when they're five years old? Exactly. Holy shit. That's I'm not like, right. No. I don't think, but it, <laughs> exactly. it's real. Exactly. It I'm like, guys, I've been thinking about this for so long. Like I have like, I mean, I have like a couple options. Like I think my dream wedding would be like in Italy and like have great food. And I have this one venue picked out that's been on my vision board for like years. Holy shit. Okay. It's, it's no, it's gorgeous. And it's, probably so expensive probably but but like having like a close like family friends wedding Mm. and like italy and then having like a giant reception with like everybody else when you get back that's kind of like ideal like ideal dream second choice would be beach wedding i love the beach i would love a beach wedding actually yeah like i grew up going to maine every summer and i said this on the last podcast it was like one of my happiest memories so like going having like a beach wedding like i'm very much a beach oriented ocean person like me as well so you know like i'm not one of those girls that goes to the beach and lays there and tans i'm if we go to the beach i'm going in the water like that's oh, yeah. how it's going real so real as hell i know? better be body surfing exactly and if there's not enough waves that i can't I will, body surf i will find a way to body surf like, i'll just oh i was gonna say i'll just be sad <laughs> yeah i'll just i was just gonna say, I'll, I'll just lay in the sun i'll play i'll play beach games yeah i'll i'll lay i'll just go in I the water a, and i'll just sit there like i don't care I like i'll lay little beach volleyball or exactly. like um what's that one with the paddles the uh the ping you pong know. you know what i mean yeah i know yeah, you know yeah, yeah. we don't that need another name that one <laughs> but yeah that's kind of i think my like ideal like i do want to get married like i want one of those very like you know i i i mean i've known from a very young age that i do like people that are older than me so i very i very much prepared and expected for the fact i know just get your head off of the microphone <laughs> like this is it's so funny because it's just it's true like i can't no yeah like i don't hate at all i just have to laugh it's (laughs) very it's very much true but like the thing is is like i very much expected for like me to get married at a young age because of that because like i've always expected okay like what if my partner is a bit older than me like then when do I get married, you know, or what if, like, but, like, I'm fine with that, like, I'm fine with, I was gonna say, you're Virgo, fine with that, I'm fine with that, I'm fine with having something very grounded in my life, you know, and still being able to, like, have a career, and then maybe not having, like, kids until later, or whatever, I do want kids, I think for the longest time, I convinced myself I didn't, because I was, like, oh, I didn't want kids for a very long time, I was, like, no, 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 and then I just also, like, I don't think physically can have kids, but like, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll cross we'll that, see about that, when one. that comes I'm also to not it. too sure about that yeah, personally. So, <laughs> and it, it very much scares me, but I think that I do want kids. Like I want, I've always wanted a big family, like three or four kids. And like, Ooh. I know, but like, I just think having like multiple is just so fun. And then like my, my fun, fun facts, now thinking about it fun now, <laughs> but I, I already have, um, I already have my list of baby names, but I told you this, but I had, I I feel like a lot of people at our age do. Yeah, I feel like they do. But I, I had this vision once when I was at yoga and I was like meditating. Oh, I remember you told me this. Yeah. And I was, it was very like, like, I'm going to get hippie on you guys for a minute, but it was very, very like clear meditation. And I, the, the name Riley came through and I was like, I'm naming I like and then I just had a dream about it after and I was like I'm naming my first kid Riley and it's gonna be a girl you had a few dreams about it I had a few dreams about it I think and I told Molly about it I've had like I had somebody come up to like come to me in a dream being like your first child is gonna be a, a girl and like and I was like oh and then in my meditation like Riley just came through and I was like me having a girl named Riley just makes so much sense and so my first daughter is going to be named Riley. That's, that's very sweet. That's how it's going to happen. But I just looked at the clock when it was 34, 34. Sorry. Oh, I had to, so that's, I had to mention so that. That's, so I had that's to mention that we're, we're, we're big number people. Guys. Yeah. And 34, and as I said that, it was 34, 44. So, so 34. Yeah. Big love number. Big love number. So that's definitely happening. Um, Riley is going to come into existence. And maybe Can't I'll wait have, to meet her. Maybe I'll have the podcast like 20 years from now. And then I'll have Riley on when she's <laughs> a little girl. But we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I just, I've always wanted that. I've always wanted that long type of love and that, that very loving relationship because I didn't have it. And I feel like, you know, my trauma and my past and the way that I've looked at love and my family has looked at love has made me believe I can't have it. But I feel like I'm finally getting into an era of believing I can and accepting I can. Yeah. And I mean, I so guess important. I guess like, you know, 
And again, that, so proud of you. I know, I know. And that comes into like, like, I guess like the, the next question, which actually just, this is just flowing so perfectly, but like your beliefs on love, like what, what, what do you think? Like what has, have your past relationships affected it? And like that, and I mean, I know for me, it, it definitely has. And like, but my belief of, I, I truly believe that love is the reason humans exist. Love is the reason we are here, whatever this is. And I, I, I don't think that that's wrong. I think that that's true. We just have to embody love in all different forms, whether it's friendship or relationships or work or think of it at the end of the day, everybody loves something. Yeah, so, I would agree with that. Absolutely. In the know? sense of like love is one of the greatest like human capacities. And I also just think one yeah. of the greatest like conscious capacities. Like yeah. I've been watching this documentary on whales for the past. <laughs> like a few nights and um they talk so much about how they have such loving relationships and mm -hmm. just like loving familial relationships and platonic relationships within their like crews and how a lot of them will like they'll meet up on like one specific day of the year to like say hi to family and mm -hmm. like mate and like you know yeah. have a good time and it's like yeah I just feel like love as a concept uh, you know it's just that is, thing. it's why I hate Valentine's Day because I feel like love is so much bigger than romantic it love. Is. And I feel like so many people reduce the word love to this idea of romantic love in no, the sense of like have to be. that's one of the only aspects of love that you will ever find in life, or that's the only one that matters, mm -hmm. or that's especially for women, one of the ones that will make your life complete. And it's like, no, no. like so many people find love in so many different ways. I mean, yeah. like my journey through life has been so much about learning to love every moment and yeah. learning to love like you know even the oh, smallest yeah. little things that appear to me on a, a daily basis whether that be you know the silly numbers that come up on mm -hmm. in the most randomest of ways or you know the bird that decides to fly over me when I walk to work like you yeah. know it's, it's like the very small things and like seeing love for like the people that are sitting right next to you yeah or the people, like I love you, you know, in such like a like a different such way a genuine than, way that is like so real than like most love that I've experienced I yeah think, you know? no and it's like and the same with like you know then there's like the whole aspect of like familial love mm -hmm. which is like I, I love to differentiate between familial love and platonic love and how romantic love seems to be the perfect like middle ground for those two where it's like familial love is just this beautiful like we didn't get to choose each other, but we're in each other's lives. And exactly. we can, even if we don't get along, like me and my sister are nothing alike. Yeah. We don't see eye to eye on most things, but I love her to fucking death. Yeah, like exactly. I love her in the sense that like she is an aspect of me in the sense of, you know, we are all aspects of each other, but also mm -hmm. in the sense of like, we came from the same mother and father. Like we are literally different aspects of the same exact genetics. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I love her for everything that she does, everything that she goes out into this world and does. Like, today is her very first day of college. I don't know if I had told you this, no, but she decided to go crazy. back to college. That's crazy. And yeah. I'm, like, I'm really proud of her, even though yeah. I was really proud of her for doing what she was already doing. Like, you know, that kind of love is, like, so genuine, even though it's like, I would never choose her. Yeah. Like, if she wasn't my sister, there's no way in hell we'd be friends. Yeah, you were like, Like, no, never in a no, million no, no, no. years. Yeah. Same with my mother, same with oh. my father. Yeah. But I love them to death. Yeah. Because it's like, so they, too. you know, yeah. are aspects of me. They are part of my genetics, genetics, but also, like, we have so many intimate experiences together. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you, you know, like, you are one of my best friends. Um... Especially, like, on this coast. Yeah. Like, most of my good friends from, like, my past don't live around me. And, like, Devin has been, like, one of the people who, like, I can rely on, like, to talk to about anything. And also to be, like, present and, like, to be able to talk about these yeah. things, like, in person. Yeah. And that's why I think it's, like, great that we're, like, talking about this today because I feel like we've both learned, I mean, a lot from each other and a lot from love. And I think, you know, like, we took a break last year as friends but it's because we weren't in the same place and we didn't want that to get in the way of our love for each other great and i think great fucking point yeah no and literally I think, and i think that's like sometimes the sacrifices you have to make for love are like you know it's hard and it's it's sometimes loving is letting go it sometimes is sometimes loving is. is saying you need me to not be in your, your life, life right, right now, now. And, and you it, need to figure things out on your own or with yeah. other people or through other 
venues than through me, me trying to yeah. be here with you through it all. And it's accepting. And I think that, because, like, one of the questions that I've had is one of, like, what is the hardest thing you've learned from love? And, and that, I think, is one of the hardest things that I've had to learn is that sometimes you have to... <laughs> it sucks like as much as you like care about someone or you feel something for someone or there's a connection and you're like no 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 let me help you let me fix you let me let me be there for you let me like I see the things wrong with you that like I can help you with and if that person is not accepting of I want to do that right now or like I accept that you want to help me let's work on it then you have to let it go and you have to believe that there's something better out there yeah. something better that's coming or and that's the thing is I think I was in a place for a very long time where I didn't believe that there was anything coming I was in a very like I mean we're getting deep but I was in a very confusing relationship for three years like it wasn't it wasn't I you wouldn't label it as relationship because the it's guy situation it was a, but it was, it was a, a fucked situation up one it was that a made no one. sense it made no Trust sense me, I did 20 goddamn a million terror readings, readings on it. it it was it was the guy I knew how it would end when it started but yeah she did and she called you it you gotta let people go through their own journey that's you have to let people go through their own journey. You have to let like, people go like, through their own journey. That's, that's the whole thing. <laughs> that's part of love. Like, you have to let people experience things and figure things out on their own. And, I mean, like, that that relationship to me was, like, a huge stepping stone into just better stuff. Like, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Like, I've, you know, like, it, that, it was very bad. It was, like, he was just mentally manipulative and not great and it's very confused too as to where he was, was in, in his life. own yeah. life yeah and he was and there was one point where I wasn't being a girl's girl and I look back at that with very much regret and and no, I know need to regret. and I, I can't regret it because it wasn't on me completely it was very much on him and very much was not entirely on you no and but I do I do look at that now and I'm like it did teach me a lesson and it did teach it, I did realize a lot of stuff and from it and you know it set me into I think those better things Absolutely. you know and like even though like you I, know how that has worked in my life too exactly like, like it's just it like literally like you were in that right before you you got into your relationship and like I you know it didn't happen in that way for me but even after that three-year thing ended which was like pretty recently I you know was with somebody that t for a little bit but they treated me great and they showed me what it was like to be treated great and I was like oh my god like even if this didn't work out like and it didn't, but they showed me what it was like to accept that and to be treated like that. And I'd never been treated like that in that way before. Like they, they treated me very good and I very much value that and took that from whatever that was with them and can now move on to what I'm in now, which is very much accepting of all the great things. And, <laughs> and I've, I talked a lot about this with my therapist this week, but like, it's really hard for me to accept that because I've never been treated like that before. Like fully having everything be a green flag. It's like, whoa, <laughs> it's like, what is gonna go? Like in my head, I'm like, all right, where am I? Wh what am I missing? What am I not picking up on? And everybody's just like, enjoy it, Devin. And I'm like, I'm trying to, but I'm nervous. <laughs> like, let me, you know, like I've never experienced this. Like it's, it's, it's nerve wracking to have somebody put forth so much effort and like, be obsessed with me low key you know like it's it's just it's scary but it's it's exciting and I think that that that's the thing is like you learn from love so much that and like I've learned from loving myself and from all of these things that like have just put me on the path to finally accepting and manifesting and receiving this big love that or like whatever this turns out to be you know like you whether know, or not it lasts. Whether or not it lasts. It doesn't matter know? because no, no, uh, all love, no matter how short, is exactly. never wasted. Exactly. It's um, not. It's yeah, not. Because it's you learn. And like you were saying, like, you know, you've had like those experiences in mm -hmm. your life. Like I know plenty of people who have had very similar experiences. I've had my own experiences where it's like the good things in my life right now that I have would not have happened without the bad things. No, exactly. Like they introduced me to people that I would not have met otherwise. Yeah, they, exactly. They like allowed me to learn things about myself that I would not have learned otherwise. Like, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people, um, I don't even know how to put this 
correctly into words, but I feel like there's this idea of like, in order to learn something, you have to be in the right state of mind. And you, you don't. Have to be, you don't. don't. You don't. Like you just have to be open exactly. to learning. That's like, all you have to be. Those relationships do come with that like baggage of like you know you don't have to like be perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be in a relationship. You just have to be working committed. on yourself. You have to be committed and to committed work to on yourself and to yeah. allow the other person you're with to work on, on themselves, themselves as well. And, and keeping acknowledge that, that like. Neither of you are going to be perfect at the time that the mm-hmm. relationship starts, and you're going to have to work together to make it something great and something exactly. beautiful. It's not, even if it starts that way with like a spark that is great and beautiful, yeah. the work that goes into maintaining a long term relationship is difficult and exactly. it's not easy. And there are times where you want to give up and yep. quit, but yep. that's not the right move. I mean, you know, obviously, depending on your situation, yeah. differing, but. It's just it's just keeping that independence and keeping that working on yourself while also balancing being able to uh, take in somebody else and like being able to like be like I actively want to like work on you and like also help you with where you've gone and what you've done and all of that stuff. But I think that I don't know. I think that that love isn't like one I do think it's the reason we exist, but I don't think it's this one abstract concept of it has to look the same. I think everything, like, love looks different in so many ways, and that's the beautiful thing about it, is that it it is all around you, too, at any point. Like, you know, you love the food you eat during the day, or, like, even if you're having a bad day, like, one thing, like, you loved the song you listened to on your way to work, you know? Like, that's just the beautiful thing about it. And I think, like, you know, us talking about, like, relationships today and stuff, like, you know, like, even though some of them might not have been love or, like, you know, it's just the idea of, like... Oh, I don't sho- know about you, but all my oh, showed of, like, It showed it love, you know? It showed, yeah. like, happiness and it showed those aspects of love that we're supposed to experience. I, I really do believe that, you know, yeah. the one human emo- emotion we are here to experience is love. And I feel like at the, at the basis, the mm-hmm. most, like, basic definition of love that you could possibly come to is an understanding of love as accepting something or someone else for yeah. where they are. Exactly. And not forcing them or yourself to be somewhere that you're not. And that was like kind of one of the quotes I had. It's like that like love is love is accepting people where they are. It is willing to be being able to work on some someone with themselves. And like I think that's what scares me so much is I feel I've talked about this with my therapist, but I feel so I feel like a burden because of all of my past and like how much I'm bringing into things. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like not just your past too. I mean, it's the past it's that comes from your mother, mother and your grandmother, grandmother and, and like all this, back. yeah, generational trauma and generations of women being mistreated by men. Yeah, and like my trauma and I just, you know, my therapist was very much like, it's a, you can't feel like a burden. Like the right person is going to be willing to work on that with you or be great patient. <laughs> God, I Dang it! And I just I'm wanted. Like, I just because we were talking about this, yeah. I posted this to my private story. I don't know if you saw it or not I yet don't. today, but it was from the same place that I got one of my quotes, uh-huh. and it was, um, "Inhale, I meet the face of God. Exhale, in the face of another." Yeah, that hits. Like, okay. Come on. Quick speed rounds. Let's do a quick speed round oh, before we end speed this. Speed round. This is just like some Valentine's Day questions. I wanna. I wanna know the answers too, and you can ask me my answers. Okay. okay. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Vanilla, always vanilla, guys. Chocolates. Too unless much. it's unless it's dark chocolate. Dark, dark yep. chocolate. I got her dark chocolate. She's my Valentine. I Valentine proposed to her because <laughs> I don't have one today. I have one this weekend. Okay, okay. Pink or red? Red, red. Always. Look at us both wearing red. My hair is red. Okay. Um, Her hair is red. <laughs> roses or mixed bouquet? Roses, because white roses are my favorite flower anyway. So roses, but red roses for me. So Boom. and my cats can cats can be around roses. So it's they. The guy has to know the cat, the flowers, the cats can be around because I don't want my cats dying. So <laughs> real. Didn't think about so that. Real. <laughs> OK, last one. Surprises or planning everything? Neither. Go with the flow. Mm, OK, I like surprises. <laughs> I want to be surprised. Please surprise me. That's my thing. I like planning. But at some points I'm like, oh, the planning's too much. Take over, you know, so I want to be included in the process. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, she does. That's the Pisces. My boyfriend tried to plan a surprise party for me, and I you, we got into a fight over it because like, I no. hate surprise parties. But that is also from trauma. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think this was a great episode to just sit down and talk. I know Valentine's Day is kind of a weird day for both of us, but 
I feel like getting this out and talking about it, like I just love love. And I think I really do believe that any aspect of love is great. So I'm glad we got to talk with you guys about it today. Yeah. This was and a thank sec- you for having me on. Of course. I, I hope my girl come back on. You know me better than I know myself. Like Molly, if I text Molly, I'm like Molly, she'll be like, what's wrong? Like she knows, but she'll know. She'll know before I even know. So, but anyways, <laughs> this is the second episode of A Girl's Gonna Talk. Be sure to subscribe, yeah, listen do in, that. do that. You're gonna wanna you hear. Listen. The next but- episode will be on how I got into the music industry. Oh. And for my young age, I'm honestly quite far. So I'm excited to see where else it goes. She downplays it. She's doing quite well for herself. Jesus excited Christ. to see how, how like, talk about how I got into that. So I'm going to have my boss on for that one. So that will be nice. fun. Yeah, we love Jess. But okay. Well, thank you guys for listening and tuning in. And I will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.